just before I close my eyes to sleep, I want to thank the Lord for being good, kind, and sweet. I may not have done all that I wanted to do, but my Lord, it's been a mighty good day. Hey everybody, Lady Cheryl here, and I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel today. In this episode, I'm going to share with you what's going on in my grow boxes and my elevated raised garden beds, as well as the raised beds that are on the ground. I have one outside, two in the greenhouse, and I'm also going to be potting up my Miho Satsuma trees that almost died in the polar freeze last February. Okay, let's get started. You guys know I grew everything in here from seeds except the society garlic and I took the insect netting off and I've been treating them with neem oil and water and some of them that have cabbage and brassicas in it I'm treating them with BT an organic um, solution to kill the cabbage worms in their Here are the last elevated raised garden beds by Keter that I purchased. And they are doing spectacular, as you can see. And then right over there is the only uh, low to the ground raised bed that I have left outside. And we've really been attacking, let me go closer, the cabbage worms and you can see everything is looking good. Okay, I'm excited. So now I'm just gonna pan around and, and just show you all of those beautiful grow boxes with vigorous growth in them. And I'm so excited for the fall. Now let's get closer to some of those These other boxes. Three grow boxes on this elevated platform, which consists of some plastic sawhorses and wood. They are doing wonderful. Yep, I'm excited. Beautiful weather right now. It's 65 degrees, but it's gonna be 90 degrees on Monday. So we have to protect our seedlings with a little shade if that temperature lasts longer than predicted. Over here are three more grow boxes. You can see that the Society Garlic I propagated is doing well. That's great, beautiful bloom. Look at those greens, just gorgeous. God is so good. My, oh my, oh my. Look right here. <laughs> the red mustards. Yep. Everything's looking good. Okay, I want to show you three more grow boxes. That was three. Over here was three. And I'm going to show you. Okay, here are the three grow boxes. In this area, you can see that they're producing the peas that I was blessed with from Angela's Busy Bees Garden and Homestead. They're turning colors. I'm going to let them get a little bigger and dry it somewhat on the vine. Some of them are getting yellow. That could be just a regular course that they take, but we got a lot of peas. And when I harvest the peas, I have some seedlings I'm getting ready to go show you in the greenhouse that uh, I'm going to put in these boxes. So I'm not worrying about them turning yellow or dying back because I need this space anyway, you know, to plant some more of my seedlings. And then right here, I want to show you my strawberry boxes or picking up. I can, if the weather holds up, get another harvest of strawberries. They are growing very vigorously doing really good. I put these here to fool birds. <laughs> when they peck on them, they think there's something wrong with those strawberries and they don't come back. But uh, they're growing pretty good. And I'm going to cover them up with a lot of straw when the temperature drops so to protect them for the winter. And I put a lot of garlic here and I'm going to be planting onions within the next few weeks. Um, but as you can see, the strawberries are running here. So what I can do with these two is just 
put them, position them where there's a nice clean spot of soil, like right here. I'm gonna dig a little hole, put it down so that the roots can touch the soil, but not cover up the crown. And then I'm gonna take one of these rocks and put it into place there to keep it from coming up. And this right here is the beginning of a crown. I'm gonna put it kind of close by. I'm just gonna put it down, not too far down. And then I will take, I hope you can see that. Yeah, you did. And then I'm gonna take this other rock and put it right here to keep it in place. Yeah, so that's how we do. Okay. <laughs> Right here is a Gorilla card that I use for a um, herb bed. And a few herbs survived the really hot summer and that was sage and rosemary. And so I planted a few of my seedlings in here and uh, marigolds self-seeded. So that's a good thing. And they'll last until we get a 32 degree temperature. And now right next to the gorilla cart that I repurposed uh, is a wine barrel full of asparagus. I think we'll be able to harvest some of this asparagus next uh, spring. Do you all see that one <laughs> Texas Star Hibiscus holding on? Yep. There's gonna be some more way up there, about 24 feet that are going to bloom. But let me go close and show you all the seed pods. Each one of these seed, uh, these little capsules are a lot of seeds. And I'm gonna be sending them out to you guys as soon as they go through the stratification process. So now I'm in the greenhouse and these are the seeds that I got from Stinky Puddle Ranch. And I said I wasn't gonna plant them and, or sow them or grow them until next year. But I started thinking, uh, I think I got enough time. And as I said, it's gonna be 90 degrees uh, by the weekend. So yeah, I'm going to plant these three varieties of cauliflower. So that's Purple Sicily, amazing cauliflower. That's the white one. And then there's a green, uh, mackerel. I, I don't know, but it's cauliflower. I don't, I don't, I can't even recognize my own writing. But I'll look on the seed package and insert it. Uh, if it's not too trouble, because I put the seeds in the freezer. But, uh, and here is a Misuba Japanese parsley. I think I got those seeds from at home with Cherie. She blessed me with those seeds. It took a long time for them to come up, but hey, as long as I get three or four of them, I'm gonna put them in a nice container and grow me some parsley this winter. Okay, so all those flowers that I dug up, most of them are doing pretty good. You can see here, here is uh, Brian's uh, Peter basket, hanging basket. The lettuce is coming up, the seeds he planted, and the beans are doing real good. Over here is Bria's. Her seeds were a little bit slower to uh, germinate, but hey, they're coming up. And I put a, I believe this is a top crop bean right here, uh, because there were only two there, so I wanted to fill in the space. And here's some winter cabbage and beans looking good over here is my basket with the winter butterhead lettuce slow to uh, germinate but hey it's doing good and here's another one with winter butterhead lettuce looking good of course you guys know that i started the red lettuce seeds some time ago these are the mustard spinach they're doing good i'm gonna thin them out uh, celery doing good I think at home with Cherie gave me those seeds. And I have some mustard spinach down here. Right over there where the cardboard boxes I'm keeping out of the rain, there is a container and it has 
what I think is brown turkey fig cuttings. The reason why I say I think it's a brown turkey fig is because they don't have all the figs when I harvest them, don't have all the characteristics of a brown turkey fig that I've seen. However, I did get the pencil size cuttings that were smaller than these off of eBay and they were sold to me as brown turkey figs. And look at the tree over there, it's just spectacular. So I made a lot of cuttings and I'm gonna sell some and I'm gonna give some away. My tomato plants are doing well for the fall. We'll have tomatoes for Christmas. Fresh tomatoes out of the greenhouse. More mustard spinach over there. And let me turn around and show you. My next project will be potting up these citrus trees. I have one, two, three, four to pot up and one miho satsuma on the patio. Okay, everybody, my son-in-law is here. Uh, he a little camera shy. <laughs> this is Brian and Bria's father. And what we're doing is he's taking this old cart by Suncast that I've had for about 10 years. And we're adjusting the handle on it. And we're gonna drill holes in the bottom, at least he is. And it can hold 15 gallons of soil. And we're gonna take this tree that was damaged during the polar freeze last year and we're going to put it inside of this cart that way going forward i can wheel it in and out of the greenhouse right over there whenever i want to so i am very grateful okay so now mr david brian and Bridget's dad is drilling drainage holes and he brought his drill table and it has larger, um, well, the capacity to do that. I have two more of these uh, carts in the house. I'm going to have them if you will. Drill holes in them as well as the two that are going to be delivered today. So I'll go closer. Yes, go ahead, yes. Uh -huh. you keep going, mm-hmm. The other two, four, yes, that's all the drainage you will need. And two more at the bottom, on each side of that, yeah, about right there and there. I scooped up the marigolds that were growing with that sesame tree, so I'm going to, you see, I just scooped up a real big, thick root ball and I'll transplant them in something else. Okay guys, so the Kalamondan tree is all planted into this uh, cart, utility cart by Suncast. And I got it from the Big Wally store. And um, years ago it was $49.99. They were on sale for $39.99 online. And I'm gonna take you inside the greenhouse and show you where I'm gonna put the other four. I'll be right back. Look at that tree, isn't she pretty? Look at that fruit. Look at that fruit, changing colors. I'm gonna do my best to insert a picture of how much fruit I got off of it last year before the Arctic freeze. So we don't have hardly any fruit this year, but that's okay. I'm grateful because the tree almost died. Yes, my hands are dirty because of scooping up soil and I gotta sweep this up. But let's go to the greenhouse and I'll show you what I'm gonna do with the other four cards. So, in another video, I'll share with you that I'm gonna take this Lisbon lemon. It has doubled in size since I purchased it. And here is the improved Meyer lemon. It's struggling with a little leaf curling. Probably because I need to water it. I've been withholding water because I knew that I was going to be potting them up in a cart. And right here I have a plumero uh, grapefruit. Nice size since I bought it. Let me pan up so you can see it. Very healthy, nice, vigorous new leaves. Good, vigorous growth. And over there in the corner, it's just like the tree that we just potted up into the cart. It is a Satsuma, but it is a more cold hardy one. It's an Arctic freeze. And so all across this bricked floor in the greenhouse, 
I'll put those four cards. I'm so excited because going forward, I won't have to call anybody over to my house to ask me, can you please help me get my trees in the greenhouse or help me get them out the greenhouse? I'll be able to do it myself. And I'm a proud lady. And, and I know everybody needs help sometimes, but when I want to get things done, I want to get it done. So now, I can, after I get this potted up out here, I can sweep up all the leaves and the uh, straw that I had to absorb some of the moisture when the cover was off of the greenhouse and it just rained straight down on it. And uh, I'm just gonna show you something else. Oh, I saw hands in the dirt dehydrate some of his bay laurel leaves and I'm gonna take some of these off, wash them, dehydrate them, and then put them in a mason jar. Okay. Just want to share that with you. Hope I share something that you can use. Remember, check me out on Monday nights and check out my natural skin and hair care live at Lady Cheryl's Products.com. Bye now. Hold your own, eat your own. It's not all you can do with. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching. See you real soon.